crafty friends. This is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to the Irresistible Blooms workshop series. This is part one of the series. Each part of the series is independent. We'll be creating different projects throughout the way. Along the way, I have lots to show you. I've created several projects that we will be making in the series that I'll show you at the end of this video. You can purchase this stamp set now. It's one of those online exclusive items. I don't have my dies. I have, I, I purchased the dies. The dies are pretty awesome, and maybe I'll find them during this video. They're probably gonna be like stuck on me somewhere, like stuck to one of my papers because I was just traveling, so like, I don't know. But anyway, here, the dies are awesome. Look, they cut out the paper. So what I'm gonna do in this video right now is show you what you can get, which is the Irresistible Bloom stamp set, and you can get this paper. It was at, which I, it was like out of, um, Called, what's it called, back order for a while, or unavailable for a while, but it's back in stock as of when I last checked. And this paper's awesome. It's six by six. I didn't cut it down. And, it, and I'll show you what your kit consists of in case you're still waiting for your kit in the mail, if that's if you're in the U.S. and you purchased one of my kits. So then I want to just tell you that April 17th, that's what it said, uh, you, you can get the dies to go with this. If you want to wait till then to get the whole bundle, that's fine because I'm starting this series in April, but I'll continue the series till the beginning of May, giving you a chance to get your dies and catch up to me. But what's really cool about these dies is check this out. Look at these. I had them, look, they cut out these flowers. So they don't just cut out the stamp set. Like this is why I'm stocking up on this paper. I love stuff like this. You just put the dies on the paper or on the stamp set, see? And it cuts out, the dies cut out the paper or the stamps. But for now, you can just cut out the flowers that we'll be using for our card with your scissors. Don't worry if you don't have the dies. All righty, so without further ado, let's show you the card we're making. We're going to be, and I have a couple extra leaves I've already cut out from before. We're gonna use what's called the Fabulous Frames dies. And I always do things special in my kit, or, or my mom does or something, or, and this time we're gonna have a deluxe version of this next kit. Well, anywho, I gave you a piece of Lost Lagoon. I don't have my new pre-order yet. In fact, it just shipped. But luckily for you, I'm a hoarder, and I saved some of this Lost Lagoon paper. I really love this color, and it came back. And I knew it was coming back because it was in this Hello Irresistible pack of paper. So I cut you out a frame already, but I'm going to show you all how to cut out this frame in case. And, and I hope, like, I see Janet's here from my team. I hope someone can tell me if these frames are still available. These were, I think, on the last chance list. These are pretty cool frames, but I already cut one for you. Let's find the package of those. That I did find the dies for. All right, here they are. They're called the Fabulous Frames dies. I really love these because you don't need anything else with them. I like die sets that are just independent, like picture this, I think it's one of them that's going away. And I'm not sure if layering diorama is going away, but that this is in that same, I know framed stitch rectangles is going away, but I love, I love frames like this. I love stamp sets like this. I mean, uh, die sets like this because you can just use them independently. So let's just go ahead and while I'm showing you that, and saying hello, I'm just going to cut a piece. I'm just going to take this piece of Lost Lagoon and cut it in fours just to show you how the frames work and we'll, we'll cut a frame out. And the rest of you already have your frame. But I'm, many of you just watch my series and don't get the kit, especially my team, because my team gets their own supplies usually because they are, you know, mostly hobby demos and they get a discount, so they get their... They get their supplies. I'm just cutting some paper just to fit this through the die cutting machine. So many of you are just following along that way. Let me raise this up. Okay, so we have, let me see how the light is doing, the ring light here. Um, all right, turning down the light a bit just to give you more contrast. So in, when, you, when you use the die cutting machine, you're gonna use base plate, Okay, and that's plate number one. It comes with the machine. Thank you. Retiring soon. Okay, Janet. Oh, my mom got your birthday package. Thank you so much for all the sewing supplies. Okay, Fabulous Frames on sale for only $18.60. They were $31. Look at you guys. You guys are awesome. I didn't have time to check before the video. And things. It's like a moving target right now with the last chance sale. You're going to like these dies, I'm telling you. I'm going to show you how to use them. So plate number one, you use whenever you have a thin die. 
You're going to use plate number two, which is a thin die adapter. It's not called that. It used to be called that with the Sizzix. It's just called plate two. Then you're going to use a plate number three. You can see how my Lost Lagoon got right indented into my plate number three because I used it. I cut so many of these for you. This was a total labor of love, but I had to share my Lost Lagoon. I couldn't put one sheet of Lost Lagoon in each of your packets or I would have ran out because this is all I had is a partial pack. And so, see, I just have a few sheets left, but I did order some. So I gave you all just a frame and then a piece of embossed. So I'm going to show you that too. Piece of embossed uh, cardstock from the middle. So you're going to go like this. You're going to put another plate. You put a plate number three down. Then you put the cardstock. Then you put the frame. Then you put the top plate number three on top of that. And then you roll it through. And don't worry if you hear a cracking noise. Or This one's not making a cracking noise. But, you know, there it goes. It makes like a big noise like that. Like pulling it through. Okay, now this frame, you're, gonna, you're just going to tap it to get it out. Or you can use your... Take your pick tool. So kind of tap it. I tap out the middle. And then I just sort of tap it to get it out. That's what I did for you. But I could have taken my take your pick tool and just poked through any of these holes. And would have poked it out. So you have embossed already. So it embosses for you. And stitches for you. It, I mean, hello, how great is that? Now, this is the greatest part of all. So then what I did to make your kit. So I took the middle parts of these. And then I took this. I took this everything out. I just left plate number one. And I took this piece of Lost Lagoon for you, and I put it into this embossing folder. These are called the Basics 3D Embossing Folders. And I put it in there for you because it's, this is a new embossing folder, and I shut it. And I didn't have to cut that rectangle for you. It was already cut out of the middle of the frame. Oops. Sorry, we need, you know what you need? You need, because it's a 3D embossing folder, it's a teaching point. I didn't do that on purpose. You need this plate. So... Whenever you have a 3D embossing folder, you need plate number four. You don't need any of those other plates. You just need plate number four. Plate number four is this gray one. And you roll it through. And that's what you do to your middle piece of Lost Lagoon. So the rest of you have to do that yourself if you don't have my kit. And voila. So now we have this, which I'll show you how I use that on the next card we're making, which is a hello card or one of the next cards we're making, probably the next card. I mean, not tonight, but the next because it's getting late. But we'll, we'll do the next card soon. This, this weekend, maybe? Well, I don't know. It's Easter. Family coming. So maybe next week. We shall see. Because my family, knowing them, they want to be on YouTube. They, they like, want me to work. Because they want to be on YouTube. I mean, my nieces and nephews. They want to, they want to like, start filming with me. All right. So that's good. We don't, we don't, um, I could show you other things, but we didn't use these frames. and We're not going to be using the rest of the frames in this series. But you can use, I've used this one, this is oval, I've used this one, and then this one I've used as a tag. But I haven't actually used these, but these make cute photo corners. I just haven't even taken those out of the package because I'm mostly interested in the larger frame. All right, so now you need a piece of flirty flamingo. And at this point, I can show you what's in your kit. While I'm talking here, let's take out, a, let's take out the trimmer and the Simply Scored. Okay, this is how I make my card bases. All right, I'm going to take out a brand new pack of Flirty Flamingo because this is my last kit, and it's already sold, and it's for Annette. Her name's Annette. And so she sees this. This is her fun kit that's coming, and that's, that's it. I'm done. Poke a fork in me. I'm done. I'm not making any more kits because the deadline to sign up was April 5th, okay? And then that's it. So the next kit is going to be Zany Zoo. Yay for Zany Zoo. And it might be called Zoo Crew. Whatever the name of the bundle is, is the name of the series. So it's either called Zany Zoo or Zoo Crew. And that'll be May. That'll be the new catalog workshop series. And then we'll start doing card clubs and lots of fun stuff with the new catalog. All right, so in your kit, you get some Easter candy, some lots and lots and lots of paper. I gave you all kinds of paper. Hues of Happiness, Ombre Specialty Paper, Fine Shimmer. There's one missing out of this. Okay, and Brush Metallic. So it means I have to go put the ombre in there for her. That's why I didn't shut this because it wasn't all, it wasn't all completed yet, this kit. I thought I was all done and then I was like, I have to go make another one. But I had a couple of parts of packs. So when you get mystery craft surprises, you get like leftovers of my other kits. So you're gonna, we're going to be using this really cool paper in this series. It's called, it's a new paper, Naturally Gilded Designer Series Paper. This is going away. This is a host only designer daydream. This is probably the last kit I'll include this in, if not one more. I do. I am including this in my next kit, though. Flowers and more. Window sheets, foam adhesive strips. 
But in order to keep the cost down, because the prices all went up in the next catalog, I won't be giving um, as many foam adhesive she sheets as I do. Like, you'll get like an eighth of a pack instead of a quarter of a pack. Just little things like I have to do to tweak to save a dollar here and there so, so that I can keep the cost down of my kits. Okay, and then there's all kinds of stuff. Window sheets and everything. Anyway, this, you get this frame. Hello Irresistible. Let's show you the paper. And this, the Lost Lagoon thing I included in your kit. This is what I just told you. Oops, I dropped my cute little sequins. My little, bo I'm, I'm obsessed with little baby bottles. If you did my She Shed tour with me, you could see. So I gave you, I'm just gonna put these away first and then I'll show you the paper. So in this, you got a little frame I cut out of Lost Lagoon. Then I cut the, and then I embossed the middle for you of, with this one. Well, we'll put that in later. That's Lost Lagoon. Then I gave you a piece of the specialty pretty peacock paper that's retired. I forget the name, but it's some kind of specialty paper that used pretty peacock. I knew that color was in the series, so I, I gave you each a little piece of paper. It wasn't the same size piece each, but we'll use it in one of the cards. I gave you each an embossed piece of either petal pink or pretty peacock, whatever I had, or something that coordinated. That's also basics 3D embossing folder. And then you got all kinds of shapes from decorative, deckled rectangles to he's all that to like these different punches that are retiring. This, this one we use now, this little punch rec rectangle, postage stamp punch, something fancy, another deckled rectangle. So you got a bunch of little shapes that we're using in our cards for this series. And then you got this paper, which is going to be pretty much the paper we use. The other, I, I always give you extra papers to, for you can experiment. Try out other color schemes and things. But mainly, we'll do all our cards with this. Just like you'll, you know from Playing in the Rain that we didn't use, we just used Playing in the Rain paper. But then later I showed you how to use, in that series, the last part of the series, I showed you how to use this paper to create the little cards with a whole different color palette. So you may recall that. So that's what I'm saying. That's why I give you extra supplies. So you can experiment with your different color palettes. So don't feel like you have to use the supplies exactly the way I do. That's what fun is. So we're going to take this piece today and we're going to make a frame out of it. But I'm not going to take her piece because I have other pieces that are separate. But we're going to make we're going to put that in a frame. We have this little piece here with the modeled sort of watercolor look. Again, this is a pack of paper that's already six by six, so you don't have to cut it. And it comes in at 48 sheets in a pack. And the coordinating colors you could see are soft sea foam and pretty peacock colors that are returning. Pretty peacock petal pink, um, lost lagoon. We've already mentioned. Flirty Flamingo. I mean, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous patterns. So I'm going to be making the sentiment today in Night of Navy because it's a nice neutral color, dark, and it's just going to be nicer than black for the sentiment. A lot of these pages cut out with the dyes. So that's really nice. Okay, we're going to put that there like so back into the packet. I will mail this tomorrow after I get it all together. You can see there's different things missing. And then I always include in my workshop series, it's going to be different than the card club. The card club is not going to get as many things. But this is a workshop series. So you get like the whole Kit Kat and Caboodle. We do it for a whole month. This is this other paper I included. I'm not including this anymore. I don't have any more. I gave you pretty much almost everything I had. Dandy Designs. I saved some for myself, but I'm saying I don't have enough to put it in the future kits. Texture Shimmer Paper, Vellum. I give you lots of different specialty papers in your kits. So these are vellum layering designs. You know how I used those in the last one. All right. So that was the Irresistible Blooms workshop kit. We do a techniques kit, a techniques workshop every month. We're going to be doing watercoloring in this workshop. Then some of you got glittered organdy ribbon and some of you got vanilla, very vanilla ribbon. But everybody got flirty flamingo metallic ribbon. You got this frayed ribbon, which is super cool because you can, I frayed it to show you an example. I mean, I made a card with it, so fray this is frayed ribbon. I think this is on Last Chance, too. I'm not sure, though. It's pretty cool ribbon, frayed ribbon. And then I gave you all Pool Party Sheer Ribbon, which is on Last Chance. Some Daffodil Delight. That was another coordinating color, Daffodil Delight. I had some of that ribbon. You might get a different style. And then I gave you a bunch of embellishments. You might have different ones. Some of you got Genial Gems. Some of you got Polished Dots. But you all got Brass, brass Butterflies in your kit. So those are going to make a beautiful addition to our to our, you know, cards and things. You even got some sea glass shapes. And in the sea glass shapes, you have soft sea foam as one of the colors that coordinates with this. Today we'll be using iridescent, these iridescent rhinestones. 
And you have some little pearls. I mean, there's lots of embellishments in your kits. All right, then you get always get some cardstock. And I'm trying to decide when I do the card club if I'm going to be giving you cardstock like this in a nice package or if I'm going to be cutting it down and folding it. I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to be presenting the cardstock to you, but I like in the kits how I give it to you. There's this workshop kit has petal pink, flirty flamingo, soft sea foam, night of navy, basic white, basic black, daffodil delight, fresh freeze as your extra color. That means you can use that with either your dandy designs. And even if I'm not using it, you can use it. Or you can use it with the flowers and more. So I always give you an extra piece. That color's carrying over. And then you got watercolor paper, which we're going to be playing with and die cutting. Delicate details treat box. We'll decorate a box in this series. But we'll use the blending brush to color that box. You have a craft note card and envelope, a medium envelope. There's your watercolor paper. You can see it has texture on it. Okay, so these are all the things you get. And masking paper. I did cut that down to about a half a sheet now, half of a five by seven sheet. Just make sure it's in there because sometimes I forget to put things in there at these last minute. Yep, I see it. I see it in there and then I, sh I ship it in a flat rate bubble mailer. And the reason I'm thinking about the card club is because it's going to be more supply driven and it's only going to be based on a smaller, not the die bundles, but either a punch bundle or a stamp set. The thing about leaving it, the card stock big is it makes the shipping cost more. And you got this cute little sequins, little bottle of sequins. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with these little bottles. I get them at Hobby Lobby. Or sometimes I get bottles at Dollar Tree. So you get little sequins in there. You have to really get them out. It was hard for me to get them in there. I was watching Netflix and kind of stuffing your little bottles. So that's what a kit typically looks like. Every month it's different. Full of crafty goodness. So you can sign up. You sign up in the middle of the month. So I'll sign up, I'll have you sign up for Zany Zoo before the catalog even goes live. And then you'll have until the fifth of the month to sign up for any kit. And then I ship the kits by the middle of the month. Even though I've already started the series, some of you get them first. Like if you got stuff from my hoard, my stash, some of you get the kits a little bit later, depending on when you order them. And that's how it works. All right, so I'm just trying to open that package here. All right, so we need a piece of flirty flamingo. And we're going to make vertical cards. So we're just going to go like this. And we're going to take it. We're going to take the piece of eight and a half by 11 and lay it 11 across. And then we're going to score it at five and a half. I like on this simply scored tool to use the smaller end of the stylus when I'm scoring my cards rather than the larger end, which is good for using like when you're making paper flowers and curling up the edges and things. that just putting that card stock away then you're going to take your trimmer you could have scored with your trimmer if your trimmer has a scoring tool in inside it but this one does not this one has these one this my my trimmer has just two blades on it because I, I took the scoring tool off you're going to make it four and a quarter across i'll write these measurements down for you okay and now you have two cards out of one piece of card stock so save this next card because we're going to use it again in the series, you're going to be using the other vertical card, the other vertical flirty flamingo card. Then you're going to take it and turn it over and just, I use the ledge of this, the ledge of my trimmer to help me flatten the card. And then I just take, you either take a bone folder. In my case, I just take a spatula and I flatten the cards. So now we have another card made for later. And we already have our embossed piece for later. So we're ahead of the game. So I don't, you know, we already have done this piece for another card. All right. So now let's take, I'm just going to go through my stack here and show you which one we're going to use. So let's look at the card again we're making in case you came in late. It's like this. Okay. We're going to take this piece. Okay. We're going to take, a, it kind of looks like a checker. It's the flirty flamingo piece. So we're going to go out here. Not flirty flamingo. The card's flirty. This one. Pretty peacock piece. Like so, on the back looks like that. Again, you don't have to follow my design exactly, just use whatever you want, but I'm gonna use this side. You might decide to use the other side. I'm gonna do four and an eighth by five and three quarters. Okay, we'll write it all down when I get my mat out. 
Next, we don't want this piece because this is the piece that's die cuts perfectly with the die cut shapes. We want the one that looks like a little mural because it looks like it should be in a frame, right? It's so pretty. So we're gonna find that piece. Okay, it looks like this. I already showed you what the paper looks like, so we don't have to do that again, but that's the other side of it, if you wanna see that. We're going to keep in mind that you want a lot of this part showing. So when I say it's gonna be five and a quarter height, then go ahead and turn it to its side and make it five and a quarter right now. That way you're chopping off this part. You're just chopping off the plain part. So it's important to know like which way your patterns are going. And I like this flower a lot, so I wanted that to be a focal point. So I'm gonna make it four inches, but I'm gonna make it four inches with the flower, with the tall flower inside the seam. Okay, save all these pieces. We'll be using them for other things throughout the series. Okay, next you wanna attach these two together and you can either use rolling adhesive. When you have an eighth inch like this, I tend to use glue because glue is forgiving and you can get that eighth inch lined up better. But we don't know how much glue is in here, so we'll see if I can get through this. Okay, I think I need to take out my mat at this point, start writing down stuff and using something to protect my table here. Let's get this little mat here. It's called a grid paper. We sell the grid paper. I just don't want to start put, getting glue all over my nice wood finish that my hubby did here. All right, so let's take, let's take this and put some... This is called multi-purpose adhesive, I believe, or something like that. And everybody tells me I use too much of this, but it is what it is. It's only a few bucks. And I'm gonna lay that on there. And like I said, the reason I used liquid glue because when you only have an eighth of an inch and if you use like CO plus, then you put it down and you can't lift it back up and you're like, oh no. But here you can wiggle it, see? You can wiggle it to make it fit exactly the same around all the edges. And the same goes for that frame. I did the fr I used the glue for the frame because that way I got the frame to stay right where I wanted it. All right, so let's pause to write some measurements before we do the next part, before we do the stamping. So we have the card. The card was 11 inches and it was by four and a quarter because it was an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And we were able to get two, two cards out of one paper. And we scored that cardstock at five and one half. Okay, so that was the card. And now we have the DSP. DSP layer one was five and three quarter, three, three eighths of an inch. Because the other part, I'm just gonna do the next part too at the same time, right? So, because it's normally, when I do a layer, like this layer is what I would normally have. I wouldn't have that extra eighth inch, but you needed it on this card because if you don't have it and you try to put this piece on the flirty flamingo, here, let me just do it. No contrast. It doesn't look good. So I had to put that extra eighth inch layer behind this card. So that's what that is for. But usually you see me in my measurements. I usually put, I usually do the five and a quarter by four. That's what I always do. You always see me doing that. Almost, I mean, pretty much all my videos. I mean, 99% of my videos. But when I put the eighth inch, I usually put it that extra eighth inch like that. So that's where I come up with that. And the reason I don't even have to, you know, write it down. I write it down for you, but I'm saying I just memorize it because this part is in my head. It's ingrained. Then the eighth inch, you're just adding that on if as needed. Not all the time. Not for every card, but I'm saying. All right. You'll get to see that in a minute. I'll let, the, I'll let you see that a little better. And because we only have an eighth inch leeway here, I'm gonna use the glue again. And let's make sure that it opens the right way. And then you're gonna put a piece on the inside, the cardstock piece, basic white, and you're gonna make that cardstock piece this size. So plus, I'm gonna say, and inside. So it will look like just a piece of white. That's all I did. You could decorate it if you want. I'm not sure how I'm decorating it yet says thank you, I mean, probably blank for now. All right, so then you're gonna attach that to the card. 
So far, so good. And now we need the frame that we cut out. So we're going to use the glue for that because we want it to be on there nice, but we also want to, if it gets crooked, like, oops, you know, not that you, if you want to make it crooked, you can actually do that as part of your design. But I'm saying if it gets crooked because I dropped it, I can always wiggle it a little bit when I use glue, but I can't do that if I used the Seal Plus. Just make sure you're putting glue on the right side. There's an embossed side that looks nicer. That's the embossed puffy side is the outside. And of course, feel free to use dimensionals or your foam adhesive strips, of which I gave you a lot. That's the last kit that you're getting a quarter of a pack of foam adhesive strips. Because the next kit, you're gonna get like an eighth of a pack. So now you have enough foam adhesive strips to do our shaker card for this workshop, and you have enough to make this card puffy. So go ahead and use your extra foam adhesive strips if you'd like to make this 3D. But I just decided not to make it 3D until after the shaker card project. Then we can start using leftovers. All right. So you see how I can wiggle it, but then it, only for a minute because after that it dries like concrete. This, this glue is so strong. Oh, it's coming together, coming together. All right, now you're going to take a piece of basic white. Okay, I'll leave that there. And you're going to punch. So punch with rectangular. Oh, I should have said, I should have said the frames too. Fabulous, okay, fabulous frames dies. And then this punch I believe was, I think it's sticking around, I don't know. I hope so, or did I show it in my, no, maybe, maybe it is, I don't remember. Do you guys remember? Rectangular. I just did a video and I just, I had all my stuff out and then I put it away and I think when I put everything back away is when I lost those dies because I had everything out to show you all these things that were on sale and clearance and last chance and all this stuff. And then I put things away. And now I don't remember myself if this was one of those $13 punches, which was a good sale. Anyway, yeah, it's retiring. Okay, GN, thank you. All right, good. So let us know the price of that guy, if you don't mind. Just go to stampinup.com and let somebody know how much it is. So you're gonna take a piece of, I don't need this gigantic piece, right? So just, I mean, I just happen to have a gigantic piece. We're going to take Knight of Navy. Let's move this out of the way. I gotta get my ink here. We're taking Knight of Navy and we're going to stamp with it. So this is the colors we need. We need Knight of Navy. And then we're gonna ink around with one of these, like two of these colors. Probably Petal Pink and this one, Soft Sea Foam. Right? We could ink around the edges with Floaty Flamingo too. Just get coordinating colors. So when you open up your ink, see it opens up really easy, but if you ever have a hard time opening up your ink, it's like, it doesn't slide, use wax paper. Put some wax paper in there, rub it around, and it'll help you open up. You can hear a little squeaky noise. That means it's a little tight. So we're gonna take these stamps and put them out, going onto a stamping block. Okay. I'm just grabbing a couple of stamping blocks because I'm not sure which one's going to fit. Okay, we need thank you. I've already taken all of these stamps out and put them on to the cling adhesive. This is a cling stamp set. Super, super, like, there's a lot of sentiments in here, right? We have, I like you, thank you, hello, hooray, it's your day. And then this one, I couldn't be happier to have you as a friend. So many cool sentiments for inside and out. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your stamp down like so, and then you're going to put your, you just put your stamping block on it, and then you're going to tap, tap, tap into your ink, and of course stamp onto your grid paper a few times to get to get your stamp all conditioned, and then and then I would use the silicone mat if you have one. This just helps; it's a good surface for stamping, and I'm going to stamp it down here near the bottom. And you're gonna see why, because we need to punch it out with the rectangular postage stamp punch. Hold it for a few seconds. One, two, three, lift up. Ooh la la. That's nice. Now I usually tell you to ink up things first, but we don't even have our shape yet. And this one, you really need to do the stamp before you punch. So we're gonna ink up later, and that's why we're only inking the corners. Thank you, ooh, 11.40, even better. Thank you so much, you've made my day. That's even cheaper than I thought. 
So that's a good deal, you guys. 11.40 for these heavy duty punch. And you're gonna like this punch. It is on the last chance sale and it is still available. All right, so let's go like this now. The, is, this was such a close fit. That's the reason I didn't tell you to, usually I tell you to stamp onto a shape, but in this case, I want you to, did you see what I just did? I should have told, I'm a teacher and I have to show you every step. So I, sometimes I skip steps because they're so in, they're so like internalized into what I do. So what I did is I picked up my punch, I turned it over. This is just something I automatically do. I go like that to open my punch. Okay, now I always look at what I'm punching. So now you know why I'm doing it. So you have to look. Now you see what I mean? This is a close, tight fit. When you try to stamp afterwards, right? If you want the curly cue, it just depends. Maybe you want it centered. Maybe you want it like that and you want to cut part of the curly cue off. But if you want the whole curly cue, you got to push down like that. So it doesn't really matter which way you do it, but I'm just going to go ahead and kind of, I'd rather center the sentiment and cut off a bit of the curly cue. That's just me. I mean, it's up to you how you do that. But the reason we didn't ink up until after, and then to get to the other one, I have to kind of, I just got to kind of make a little, make it so I can reach in there with my punch, right? Let's see if that'll reach all the way in. Nope, I'm going to reach in from this side. So you do need to get, if you're trying to punch, you need to get close. Sometimes you need a sticky note. Here's my sticky note trick. I'll show you my sticky note trick after I make the paper a little shorter. Still need the paper to be shorter. But sometimes when you get it really short, right? Then you try to get your punch in there and then you can't, like you can't hold the paper. So you always like, that's my sticky note trick. You just hold the sticky note. And then you can kind of get it in there. Get in there. All right, see? And you can center it the way you want it. Ooh la la. So if you want that little curly cue at the end, like that, but I'm gonna cut mine off so that I can center my center. Love it. All right, so that now you can get rid of it. And I had, you know, I was using that anyway, so it's a scrap. So use your scraps of your sticky notes. So now we're gonna take our blending, I'm gonna leave this so you can see them. We're gonna take our blending brushes get some ink on our stamp pad. So now we're going to use soft sea foam and we'll, use, we'll try petal pink, right? So we just want a little bit of, a little bit of ink like that on there, right? Just like so. And I'm going to use the mini blending brushes and we're going to tap in there and then we're going to tap a blob of the ink off onto the Matt, and let's see what I did here. I did it down the bottom left. It doesn't really matter. So you just want, I just did the corners because I didn't want the, I didn't want to smear the sentiment. But let's go ahead and try to do that. That's just, you're just adding a little dimension. I mean, now that it's dry, because I've been yapping, it should, it actually, you might be able to get in there without smearing it, see? But if you try to do it right away, it might smear it. There's a little piece of sticky note stuck on there. Okay, let's go ahead and do the other one while we're here. Okay, tap the blob off, and this time I'm gonna ink up the top corner. You may see people dipping right into their ink pad, and oops, I did smear it a bit. But it's okay, because it's a neutral color. Blue is not, uh, that nighty navy navy's not so bad. You might see people dipping straight in there, but I like to always put my ink on a stamping block so I know how much ink is on there. It kind of just lets me control how much ink is on my blending brush. And now I'm going to take the petal pink. Okay, so again, we, we stamped in night and navy. We inked up in soft sea foam. And now, oh, here we go. We have, it's on my, it's right here. We could use flirty flamingo or petal pink. Just see, I think my petal pink's kind of dry. Kind of dry. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. So then I'm going to tap a blob off. See, even though it looks like it's really light, a light pink, it's kind of dark. I'm flipping over my little silicone mat because I don't want to mix the soft sea foam with the petal pink because when you mix two colors, it kind of comes out like brown mud. And it does smear a little bit, but then you, if, you, if it does start smearing, actually it kind of looks cool. But if it does, you could just like tap, 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 and then I'll keep it from smearing. And where'd this one go? Let's see. 
Okay, in that case, I think I need a little bit more ink. Yeah, and I'm gonna just tap instead of rubbing because I'm at the point where it's like smearing a bit. Ooh la la, it looks good. All right, now we can put that on our card with our little leaves. And I've already colored some leaves and I would just use dimensionals here. And I, like I said, because I cannot find my dies, I came prepared with some of my extra leaves, but you're gonna cut out your leaves and things and you're just gonna pop that up with dimensionals. Let's see which one's cuter. That one might be cuter. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's get dimensionals. These are the mini dimensionals, but we can also use regular dimensionals. Or I can actually just use, sometimes what you do when you have a big piece here, I gotta put that up there so it doesn't have a glare for you guys, is I just use like the edge of my dimensionals like so. Like if, if I'm using the mini dimensionals, I just use the whole edge of the pack. And the reason I put it down there is because of that pretty flower, I didn't want that to be blocked. And now I'm gonna put this little guy. I mean, it's up to you whether you wanna glue him down or whether you want to make him up, you know, pop him up on dimensions. I'm gonna use glue only because the other kind of flowers I have, or the other kind of leaves I have are so, like they need to be glued. And what these were was, these were just punched out in white they're actually part of my Teams Make and Take kit. I'm gonna show you that kit. Well, I don't have the kit, I made the kit. But Jennifer, the one who's in charge on our team to make these kits that she sends out to the team if they wanna make the monthly meeting, make it takes. She gave me a, a bunch of extra little white leaves. So what I did is I colored some of them with my so, or soft seafoam ink. It doesn't look like it, it almost looks like granny apple green because I colored them so much. But all I did was just keep layering up this soft sea foam on them so that they would coordinate. So that's where I got these little leaves. They were white. I could have just cut them out of that color. But again, can't find my dyes. And I happen to have that extra leaf. But I will find them. I'm not buying more. Well, I can't buy more. Even if I wanted to buy more because they're not available just at this moment yet. Okay, I don't know why I have this random dimensional stuck to me. I'm stuck on you. And then we're going to add a few little iridescent rhinestones, yada, 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 to get there. These things. Iridescent rhinestone basic jewels. That's what we're going to add. All right. So they come in three sizes. So let's find my other card and see what I did with them. Maybe kind of, I sometimes use my other card to inspire my new cards. I put the big one up there in that big blank area like so. And then I took the medium one and I put it down here like so. And then I just put a tiny one down there because it's a busy area. Just to kind of randomly put, so there's a tiny size. And you can use any, any bling you have. It doesn't have to be this exact bling I'm using. Voila, that is how to do it. And now I'm gonna say hello and show you a bunch more projects you can create with this Irresistible Blooms bundle. All right, hello, hello, everyone. Thank you for coming on this late night crafting session. Midge was the first one here. And Janet, oh, she said I'm here first, but Midge was there first, but no, who's counting? <laughs> okay. Oh. How's your stamp set going to get delivered on Easter Sunday? That's what I want to know. She said my stamp set's coming Sunday. Awesome. Hello, Yvonne. Who's working Easter Sunday? There are some dedicated drivers out there, I guess. Well, thank you. I'm glad you like my scan and cut tutorials. Enter. 117. Hello, Anna from Australia. So you used to be a demonstrator, you're saying. Okay. Enter, saying she used to be a de demonstrator way back in... 2000s. Hey, that's not that long ago. We're still in the 2000s, sort of. All right, fabulous frames. We're talking about different sales. Hello, Jean. Hello, Hilda, Jeanne, Sandy. We are talking about the last chance sale. And the reason we're having a last chance sale is we're having a new catalog. 
And this just came in the mail, and I haven't even... Hello, Diana. I know, nice to see you from Arizona. I have not even taken it out of its cellophane yet because I knew I would never do my... I mean, well, you guys you guys know, if I, if I took this out of the cellophane, I would be, like, not on YouTube until, like, 11 o'clock at night. So I just kept it in its cellophane. Plus, I'm not allowed to open it to show you yet. But if you'd like one... Use the link in the description of this video to order your annual catalog now. I just offer these once a year. And after that, I mean, I offer them as a mailing. I'm going to be doing a mass mailing this month. And I've already ordered some from the company. But after that, then I only offer them as part of my kits and things. Like if you get a, if you get like a card club or you're a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, you'll get catalogs. Or if, you, if you're a customer, you'll get catalogs. But I don't, I don't offer it to like the world anymore after that. I don't offer like this mass mailing of catalogs because they cost like $8.00. Each the way I mail them, I, I mail like this big flat rate envelopes full of fun stuff. And so I'm just gonna be offering them right now. And then after that, I'll offer them as like an add-on to my kits and things. But right now you can use the comp form and get a catalog for free. All right, so let's see what I've done so far. Okay, we are going to make this card. Now I'm not quite finished because I want to add some more leaves, but we're gonna be making this card in the series. And the reason I like to make this card, and I think it would also make a nice shaker card is there's this element, and when I played with it, when I did the unboxing, I really thought this element was to a cut a, a circle cut out, but no, it, you cut out the rectangle and it makes a hole through whatever your cutout is. So I thought it would make a nice shaker card, and I also tried this design, and I just took a different die, and this is the same die, and I angled up the little pieces and put it behind the hello. And so all I need is a couple more leaves and a couple a little bit of bling, and this card will be done. So we're gonna be making this card, and it also uses floaty flamingo. Okay, now here are some I made with different, in this series, I mean, or not in the series, when I unboxed, I was playing around with my new 3D embossing folders, and I created this card. There's a soft sea foam embossed background, and some nice gold textures. So these are just samples of what you can make with this kit. Here's one with the basics 3D embossing folder, and we will use a piece of this. This is that gilded, gilded something, naturally gilded specialty paper. So we'll be using that in this series. And I'm going to show you how to use the blends to color these flowers and how to take flowers, just cut them out of the designer series paper and layering them up. Thank you, Jean. She's saying, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. I know I need to say that more often. Thank you, thank you. See, this is how the shape cuts out. So don't you think that would make a nice shaker card since I gave you all the little sequins? I'm going to play with that and see how it holds up behind the window sheet. I think it'll look really nice behind the window sheet. Or with the window sheet behind it, I should say. And I like the black and how that came out. So that's another piece of the Floaty Flamingo. And then here you can take the same fold of the card, but turn it into a side open. I didn't put the white inside it yet, but you can see how you could do that. Lots of layering going on, lots of little leaves, lots of bling bling and textures with the embossing. Here's another example of how you can emboss and just layer up the backgrounds. So these are just fun things I made when I first got this. When I first got this, and then these are my make and takes. And I wanted to also show you the card I have in the making. Okay, here's another card. Here, let me show you this one. This one's not done. I just think it needs some more. I think it needs some leaves and things. Right, but I wanted to show you that frayed ribbon I gave you. What you could do with that frayed ribbon? I love this frayed ribbon. Not sure if it's sticking around. I'm sure someone will say it. Whether it, I've like totally forgot what's staying and what's going, but I'm going to be snuggling up with this later and checking out. Because I only could see a PDF and I can't see very well and I was only able to see the PDF. Demonstrators are allowed to see the PDF. But this is the white frayed ribbon. It doesn't look like that when you get it in the roll. It looks like, well, I showed it to you earlier. If you missed it, go back and, well, here, here's what it looks like. But I love fraying it. That's what the fun part is, is fraying it. You just pull, say so you just pull this out and it becomes frayed. Is that fun? I can't stop doing it, though. I'm going to end up ripping the whole thing apart. But anyway, that this one just needs a few more leaves or, and some bling. But I'm almost done with the card. I like how it layered. I like how the middle part of what we made today, I like the middle part and how it embossed it. And, and then this little guy, this is one of those stamps again, or punches again, that's going away. All right, so now I'm showing you my make and takes. All right, so those were all the cards in the making. And the ones that are done... So we're making, I showed you two projects that we're making in the series. And now these are ones that I made with my team, make and takes, make and take kit. 
So all the pieces were sent to me by Jennifer, and all I had to do is like I just she sent me the tailor made tags dies, which I have the dies, but I didn't I didn't need to take mine out and die cut. So like I just inked around the edges. I did some extra things, but and she gave me white card bases, and I t I changed them all to either soft sea foam or petal pink because. I wanted colored card bases, but other than that, I mean, all the pieces were cut for me. She gave me loads and loads of these little leaves, and I was able to put these together in just one afternoon, which is very simple. This is, again, tailor-made tags, tailor-made tag punch. Piece of crumb cake, and then a, a piece of basic white. And all these cards, there was a big piece of linen in the kit, and you could see how those linen thread are used in every card, the linen thread. That's something that's in the new catalog, too. I'm pretty sure I saw the linen thread. Here's how to take a piece of cardstock in white and make a whole big giant panel out of it and an extra layer in the back. I turned, I tend to turn these into squares, but I like how it's a rectangle with the hole through it. And then this little piece I just cut with my scissors. And then you just do a double bow and you fray the ribbon or fray the linen thread. And this one, I, ex I, I cut this flower out of the paper, but then I also added some extra soft sea foam ink. So I hope all these cards inspired you of different things you can do with this... Hello Irresistible Bundle. And there's just so much more. We will do more. We shall do a lot of projects this month and it'll probably, this series will probably go into next month as well as we're awaiting our new catalog uh, goodies because the new catalog does not launch until May, May 2nd. So this current catalog is gonna retire May 1st and then the new catalog will go live May 2nd. So that's when we can, well, we might start our series like right away, but you won't be able to get the zany zoo until May 2nd. All right, have a great day, everybody, a great night. We'll see you again. Have a very blessed Easter. I hope you have a nice time spending time with your families, families this weekend. I know I will be excited because my family members are visiting. And they love to craft. So that's a win-win for all of us. Talk to you later. This is the Paper Chef.